Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. In season two of Hacks and Hobbies, we're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life who want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. In this episode, I get to speak with Kelsey Ann. She's a host for You Can Have It All podcast, and she has featured some really cool guests. She's also a master certified practitioner in NLP and hypnosis. She specializes in subconscious programming, identity, and relationship. I'm so honored to have her as a guest on my podcast. Kelsey, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited. I get such a great feeling. This is going to be such a fun, amazing conversation. Absolutely. So I, I learned about you through the different social media, and I was like, you know what? She's got a really awesome story with NLP and hypnosis because, you know, not just hypnosis, not just that, but it's really important to have a mindset of success and mindset that drives you to achieve success. And if you do face failures, well, those are learning lessons for all of us. So I was like, you know, she's got a really awesome attitude. She's a certified master practice, certified Mac, master certified practitioner. And, you know, let's see where the story goes and how she got here. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to become a master certified practitioner in NLP. Yeah, so um, it's it's very long. <laughs> it's a long story, no but problem. basically, mm-hmm. um, yeah, like in just in short, you know, I spent most of my life being one of those people pleasers. So like I was that girl who always had a boyfriend, always had to be with a boyfriend, and then you know, there's a lot of people. I would just like become them, right? So I would do like everything, and I would just just to get that love and all these things, and so. Eventually, I ended up finding meeting my ex-husband, and mm. uh, we got married. We had a baby. I got the career. I got like the six-figure career. I did like everything right, like everything that I was supposed to do. Yeah. And I realized I was miserable. I wasn't happy. I wasn't fulfilled. I didn't love my job. I wasn't. I wasn't with the right person. Like he's so great. I have so much love for my the father of my son, but we have so many cultural differences. And basically, I was living like this giant lie and this life that wasn't mine. And Mm. uh, so after I had my son, I like, I basically, while I was on mat leave, I started building a business. So when my son was about six weeks old, I started becoming um, a certified personal trainer because I've been like weightlifting for 10 years. Wow. So yeah, I would study like all night while my son was up feeding. I would study all the time. And I got Mm. that done within a few months, started a business, started taking on clients, realized I did not like, training people (laughs) Mm -hmm. um but which is so funny because i love working out but i just don't like training other people but i love the mindset side so started taking on female clients for their mindset started getting into nlp different things and then ended up quitting my six-figure job getting a divorce and just going like full-on into entrepreneurship Mm -hmm. and um yeah eventually got certified in NLP and hypnosis ended up getting master certified as well started working with men and it has been like such a roller coaster and such a good time I'm so grateful for the whole journey that's fantastic and how did you uh, even get to the point of like so you said you you've been working out or weightlifting for 10 years um, is there any backstory to you know why you pick weightlifting rather than running and 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 any other activities in that, in that yeah. regard? Yeah, that's a good question. And it's so funny because I've you know I love yoga. I do yoga. I used to run too, but the one thing that I always go back to is my weightlifting. Um like that's something that's a con- in the last 10 years, the only thing that has never changed is my relationship with the weight room. Mm-hmm. Um which is so interesting because I guess I don't know. I think I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it when I was 17 and then so it's been 11 years now. And I just yeah. love how 
I felt, I felt so strong. I felt so badass. I've always been like someone to go against the grain kind of. And every other girl my age was just running or just like doing Pilates and stuff. And I wanted to be, I wanted to be different. And so I got into weightlifting, fell in love with it, loved how my body looked, loved how I felt, had people like, you know, at the time I was working at the hospital and I had to like do patient transfers and people were like, whoa, you're so strong. And it just felt so good that it just mm -hmm. became, it became like an a, addictive and a really great, in a great way. Like it's just, it's my thing. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Because, um, you know, it's those um, affirmations or it's, it's those, not affirmation. It's it's those um, reinforcement from others. You know, you you you've done something, and then you get reinforced that, oh wow, you're so strong. You don't look strong, but how how did you get so strong, right? And then that that in turn invokes and and like you know I got to keep doing this because it's making you release those. Um, yeah, like all those full yeah. feel good hormones. And exactly. Yeah. Like it validates a part of yourself because you're like, you know, I was feeling really good. And then to have someone mention that, hey, you look great, you've changed, you're so strong, all these things, it validates that internal need for, you know, we all have this internal need for validation. But exactly. ultimately, and now it has nothing, after this long of falling in love with something, I think now it's really just, it's like my own therapy. It's like my own time to myself. Yeah. And I, I kind of go crazy without it. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, thank you. All right. So uh, what are some of the motivations that keep you going on a day-to-day -day basis in this industry as a coach, as a, you know, as somebody who's, who's certified, who's helping others? Um, I'm sure the feedback that you get from your clients and, and, and the people that you help certainly is a, is, a, is a big part of it, or maybe it isn't. Maybe that's just a, an outcome or that's just a, um area what's the other word it's um, a side effect <laughs> yeah 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 so you know that's a great question and i think that like i was talking about it with someone yesterday actually i was telling a client yesterday how like that motivation like we're never always motivated right like motivation yeah. comes and goes um and so ultimately i think it's that that bigger picture and I don't want to you know everyone says have a why and I don't even know that I have it's almost like I just have this internal knowing that I know what I'm capable and I know where I'm going to end up mm. and I think that that is what pushes me so much it's that you know that unshaking like unshakable belief in yourself that you yeah. can do this and um, obviously like a lot of a lot of the reasons why I show up every single day is I remind myself like, Hey, there's a bunch of people that you need to show up for. And there are people who are counting on you and people inspired by you. And that's definitely a big factor. I feel like there's so many things, right? There's my own internal motivation of knowing what I'm capable of. And, you know, I'm very open about the fact that like my biggest fear in life is dying without reaching my fullest potential. So that's a huge motivator. Um, and then the people I'm here to really serve and help ultimately and then my son, like every time I see him, I'm, he's a massive motivator for me as well. Yeah. Um, but then I have so many different things, right? I listen to, I'm constantly filling my mind with things that are going to motivate me and inspire me. I'm always listening to books or podcasts or reading. And then all of my windows are covered in, um, in dry erase markers. I mm -hmm. have everything like all over the place just to really set me up, myself up for success. And I yeah. think that that's so important. No, that's really powerful because, um, like you said, you know, your your son is a huge motivator, and myself, you know, I have three kids, and and they remind me that you know what whatever I'm working on, whatever I'm doing, it's for them so they can have a better future, so they don't have to go through the struggles that we had to go through, and you know, we are very very fortunate to be living in a country where where we have a lot of luxuries where we have a lot of the things available for us so that's absolutely absolutely amazing thank you yeah and you know i i know you can relate three kids that's incredible like 
that's such a great, that's so awesome. You know, you have these three human beings that are looking up to you and that you get to really help shit, like create their, their future. And that's just so amazing. Yeah. And, and what's really awesome is, is as grownups, you know, we start putting limits to ourselves and putting limits to what should be done and what can't be done. But our kids, you know, they are constantly testing those boundaries. They're like, oh, can I do this? Oh, can I do that? So you start seeing, you know, what, what are some of the things that we've stopped doing as adults, as grownups? So that's also a, another type of a refresher, another type of thing that, you know, there's no kid in the world that cannot walk unless they have a physical disability. Like mm-hmm. everybody learns how to walk. You, they're not going to give up learning yeah. how to walk. Yeah, I love that. It's so true. And they just look at the world in such a beautiful way that you're like, oh, what if I just looked at the world like they did? I'd be so much happier, more fulfilled, so much more grateful to just notice everything that's so awesome in the world. Exactly. Because we as or the kids, you know, they, they're like, oh, they have no concept of limitations. They have no concept of constraints and whatnot. They're like, oh, everything is possible. If I can do this, I'm going to you know, go do this. And, and, and um, it's really cool to see that perspective and having kids, like having three kids, you know, going through uh, the age. So my oldest is 10 years, uh, is almost 10 years old. And then my second one is four. And then my youngest is one and a half. So it's mm-hmm. like, you see from, you know, you learn from them as they are getting older and you see how they're learning from their older siblings. Like my youngest, she's the smartest because she has two older siblings that she's learning constantly from. And she's so smart. Like anytime he's like, oh, put on the shoes, even though she can't talk. I mean, she talks Mm -hmm. words. She's like, oh, I want to put shoes on. I want to go outside too. Yeah, that's so cute. That's so amazing. They're so smart. It's so fun to watch. I think that that's something that I, yeah, that's I think my favorite part about being a parent is just like, wow, like, we as human beings we just have so much potential we learn so quickly and kids are really just like i don't know they're like the most like innocent purest form of ourselves and it's such yeah. a blessing to watch them grow yeah absolutely it, it is it is a blessing so tell me a little bit about um you know how you got into the subconscious programming identity and relationship because it's that you know you do specialize in that area and you you know you took got certification for NLP. So tell me a little more about that because I think that's really interesting and, and um, very intriguing for me. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm a huge follower of like Tony Robbins. I love him. And, oh my God, uh, I love that guy. Yeah. And so he is certified, like he's so great. And he's, he's an NLP practitioner. He actually didn't get to finish his certification because like the day before he was finishing it, he went and, um, he went and like did a bunch of techniques on people at a restaurant. And then he was told that like, he couldn't do the certification. Anyways, it's a funny story. If anyone wants to go look it up, <laughs> yeah. but uh, like, basically I was like, okay, well obviously he's able to have these massive shifts with people yeah. over like a weekend that like unleashed the power within and stuff. And I would watch it all. And I was like, I want to be able to do that because I was working with, I was working with women on their mindsets mm-hmm. and I wasn't seeing the differences that I wanted to see with them. Like, yes, they were having results, but it wasn't these like really deep, like massive, you know, you see it in someone's face when they have an actual shift within themselves where it's like they understand on like a DNA level that something has changed. And I wanted that. And uh, I just, you know, I'm very like, I'm really spiritual and there's so much about spirituality that has to do with like our subconscious mind. So I just started learning so much and all of the most successful people in the world, they all talk about, your subconscious mind, the power of it, you know, when you can like understand that, see what's going on in there and make the subconscious conscious is when you can finally be successful. So Mm -hmm. that's really what inspired me. And uh, after that, like everything just fell into place so easily. I'm really grateful in that sense of my life. When I decide to do something, things just happen in such a great way. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So then I just got certified and I'm so glad because like, it's incredible how much can happen in just one session with my clients. That's amazing. Yeah, I am a huge follower of Tony Robbins. 
Uh, I've been following him since God knows 2003. Wow. And um, I, I watched his um, infomercial one night. I was uh, traveling for work and, you know, up late at night on watching TV. And I saw him come on this infomercial. And I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I need to get me some personal power. <laughs> and so I got his CDs and I would listen to these every single day. And, you know, every time, any time that I can get get my hands on my CDs. I would listen to him and uh, then I even had the power talks that would come like every week or I think it was monthly, they would send two CDs. And it was just so powerful because, you know, he's, he's, he, he talks about uh, your personal power and who's the person behind your business. It's you as a person. So if you fix the person, your business, it gets fixed too. Mm-hmm. So it's really, really cool. And I, I didn't know about him, you know, trying to get the NLP certification, but he's been doing this for God knows how many years, right? And he's so good. We, I got, I had the opportunity to, to visit with him um, last year and I was just blown away by the level of energy that he brings on stage. Mm-hmm. He's like up there sweating jumping and god knows it's it's just so amazing like being in in this room with the, with this guy with so much power it's just just so amazing i every time i hear his name it's just you know i, I just go bonkers <laughs> yeah yeah and i love it he has such like he has that effect on i think everyone mm-hmm. and he's just so great i can't wait to go to one of his i haven't even gone to one of his events yet i've always just like listened to him and followed him and i'm yeah. just so because yeah you can't beat that in-person energy no it's almost like you're at a concert because concerts go on for hours and hours right and you're you're like so pumped up and you're like standing and jumping so every 20 to 30 minutes every 20 minutes i think he would have people stand up and jump and do like high five each other it was just really a crazy experience oh, that's so cool yeah that sounds so fun so um, the other thing that um, you are known for, or you have the podcast, you can have it all. And you're talking about, I mean, that's a really cool title because literally people can definitely have it all. They just have to make up that mind and be able to you know, go out there and reach it. So um how did you come up with that strategy? Was it all linked in with, you know, what you've been working on as a coach? Yeah. Um, I can't remember when the name came to me, but it was just like, I think it was like quite shortly after I had like my spiritual awakening where I understood that like, we really can have whatever it is that we want, like in this physical reality. And it was like, really, if we just like understand that mindset aspect of ourselves and understand that subconscious programming and that was a huge part. So I was, I think at that point I was really understanding that like my current programming, because our mind is really just like this giant supercomputer, mm-hmm. my current programming was holding me in these patterns, keeping me stuck. Um, I had a lot of money issues. I was having obviously relationship issues, right? I was mm-hmm. like choosing the wrong people to be with. Um, and I was having these reoccurring patterns in my life. And for anyone who's listening, if you're wondering how your subconscious programming is, Look at the patterns in your life. So do you see things consistently happening? And these things can look like, you know, for myself, it was like, oh, I'd make a lot of money and then I would get hit with all of these bills, like, you know, unexpected bills all the time. And then you could just like never seem to get ahead. That was like one of my programmings that I had going on. And most people don't understand that like that, like you making money and then getting hit with an unexpected bill, you actually caused that. Mm. So right? Like most people really think that like, oh, it's just random or it's a coincidence and not really understanding that in our internal world is really like reflected in our physical world. So this is why the subconscious programming is so powerful because it's like when you can change what's going on inside and you can change that, that computer programming that's holding you in these patterns or that's keeping you stuck or making you believe like you're not good enough or worthy or whatever it is, then you actually see changes in your physical reality and that's what's so cool so basically i started seeing those changes 
I started like having all these really incredible things happen. I was manifesting things. Um, my programming was changing as being more positive. And then I was like, man, you can really have it all. You just have to know how to go get it. Absolutely. And, and that's some of the, those are some of the same things that Tony Robbins teaches, because once you get your mind unlocked, once you figure out, you know, you don't need to be defending all the time, you don't need to be in a state of constant chaos, you can definitely go after what you really, really want. And, and, and it takes time, it takes some time and some effort and some homework, right? To yeah. get to that point. Yeah. And so, you know, I found like, that's why I love these tools because they take a lot less time. Like within 10 minutes, we can change one of your programming. So within three months with my clients, they really do become in, like entirely different people. And just to give an example, like six months ago, like May, um, I was like, not in a great place financially. Like I literally had like $19 in my account. I was like, I dropped off like my son with his dad. Um, and I was just like, what am I going to do? I was like in this house alone, like newly divorced. And I was just like, you know, I'd already had my business, but I was maybe only bringing in like 2000 a month. Like it wasn't where I wanted it to be at all. Yeah. And, uh, just like went so hard on all of this NLP stuff and just started like within like a month, you know, things were different. Actually, literally, like, so that was maybe like in February, March, so maybe like eight, nine months ago. Mm -hmm. And then like in May, I like brought in like 6k and I was like, holy shit, like this actually works. I hope yeah. I can start this. this. Um, <laughs> and then it's like just recently, you know, like I've hit like that over like, now I'm considered like a six figure coach. I was just in LA speaking. So it's like, yeah. so much has changed in like less than a year, when you really just do this work. Yes. You know, it's it's so easy to let go and not do anything. And there's so many distractions available to us every single day. You know, you can spend hours on Instagram, Facebook, and and um, LinkedIn and, and other social networks. And if you look at YouTube, well, there goes an, an, an entire day or, or Netflix, you know, binge watching shows. And then if, and a lot of times what happens is, you know, you're just not doing the homework. And I've recently discovered this about myself. I love going out there and doing the work physically. But anytime it comes down to doing the homework, my motivation is, is very, you know, my motivation is nil. So I keep yeah. thinking, you know, all right. Uh, like, for example, in just 20 hours, I was able to build an entire playset. Sure, it took me about two weeks, but every single day I would go step by step by step to finish this huge playset. And what I realized is that, you know, there's a thick book with 50 steps in it on how to build this, this playset. It's got all the, you know, everything's listed here. You know, these are the different screws and all the screws and nuts and bolts are in their specific packages and it's marked, you know, this is, this is what, this type of thing is. And then in the booklet, it says, okay, use these screws. Okay, now use these screws. Oh, you need these parts. So everything is labeled. So, and that comes, that all brings down the point that, you know, everything first needs to be organized for you to achieve something. Like I yeah. wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to build the, the, such a huge playset without those instructions. And I think a lot of the times we just take it for granted when we are provided with instructions and when we are working for somebody else, we are provided with those instructions of what you need to do on a daily basis. But as an entrepreneur, we've got to create those instructions for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, so discovering that about myself. And so now I, now that I know what's wrong with me or now that I know what I'm not good at, I can work on fixing that problem or I can work on, um, uh, correcting that issue and, and create those step-by-step -step things for myself to do. Yeah. And it's so good that you mentioned that. Cause I think that that's what it really comes down to awareness. I always say like, that's the first step with my clients. It's like, let's just bring like major awareness. And that was the first step with me awareness to what's going on in your life. Look at your life, look at who you are, be really honest with yourself. And you know, I think that you, a lot of people avoid this type of work because a, 
it sucks to look at your life and be like, wow, I am the one responsible for all the <laughs> negative things in my life. Like, yes. mm, that doesn't feel good. Um, but then there's also our ego. Our ego is so attached to our current identity that it doesn't necessarily want you to change because for you to change means that it loses its identity. So there's that as well. I, I say there's like a bit of an ego backlash and, you know, we love our ego. Our ego is there to help us and to protect us. But ultimately I always tell my clients or people like, there's always going to be so much resistance when you're going to go do something that's going to cause major change within yourself because it's uncomfortable. It's scary. Your ego doesn't want to do it. There's all the reasons not to do it. And that's when you know that you really have to just go do that work on yourself. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you, you pointing out the ego part, ego part, that's a huge, huge red flag for myself. Cause I, think to myself that I don't have an ego, but I have a huge ego, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, I've am I'm, I'm, I'm named myself Super Janae. I mean, I'm putting Super in front of my name already. That's, that's already an indicator that I have a huge ego. And I don't know where that came from. You know, it definitely came in uh, some time ago, um, but I've been somehow, you know, trying to shed it, but not trying to really shed it. But it's like, I'm uh, working on myself to be a better person. I think I need to go back to those personal power tapes. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we all have an ego, right? Like even, you know, during a spiritual awakening, there is an ego death. Like I remember I went through like an ego death and that was terrifying, but the ego comes back. Um, wow. And it, yeah. And it just comes back differently, but it's still there. But I had a moment for a while where I actually had like, a spiritual ego so one of those like i'm i'm so spiritual oh you're not spiritual right like the ego mm -hmm. always tries <laughs> to one up like i think that everyone has different types oh, of egos yeah some of us have like one up egos some of us are victim egos there's so many different kinds but ultimately it you know from what I understand, like humans didn't have egos like thousands of years ago when we were really like tribe people but then at one point it became necessary for our, like for our evolution to be like identify ourselves as individuals. And so we had this ego and our ego really comes in when we're little kids because really small children. So like probably your daughter who I think you said is one and a half and like my son who's almost two, like they don't have egos yet, but at some point something is going to happen in their life where it's almost like they don't step up or they don't step in to help themselves. And then their ego jumps in. And then that's when, the ego develops and it's ultimately there to protect us. It's there to help us. And so maybe when you were little, you weren't getting enough attention. So now your ego is there and it likes attention and it's doing it because all it wants is just love and to help us. So I think that that is so important to understand because the more we resist and fight something, like the more it's going to fight back. Right. So oh. I'll, yeah, like I always tell people like, look, your ego is with you. It's like, it's always going to be in the car with you. But what you have to understand is that you have to put in the back seat or in the passenger seat. Like you need to be the one driving the show, but it's always going to be there. So that's like a huge dynamic that you can change. And I do a lot of weird things, but you can literally like, I've had conversations with it. Like I've sat in the car and been like, okay, like, what do you like? how long have you been here? And you know, it, it said like since the beginning of time, I know this sounds crazy, yeah. um, <laughs> but then I'm like, well, I'm like, well, what do you want? You know? And it, it said it wants love and mm -hmm. acceptance. So I was like, cool. Like I'll love and accept you and whatever. And then like, it's just being fully aware of it. So for anyone who's listening and even for yourself, it's just like, how can you become more aware of how it's acting out and what it's trying to do? And then that way, when it does come out, you can just recognize it and be like, mm -mm, ego, like we're not doing this today, you know, yeah. but it's part of being human at the end of the day. Wow. Man, yes. that's, that's really eye opening because thinking about it in that term, you know, in those terminologies is really, really interesting because sure we, we talk to ourselves, but we are talking, we're talking to ourselves as a person and not really realizing that that there's a response because 
there is a response that sometimes we pay attention to, but other times we're not really paying attention to that response. Yeah. Yeah. There's this thing that I heard recently or a few months ago that said, you need to talk to yourself more than you listen to yourself. And I think that that's so powerful because most people listen to the thoughts in their head. So a thought comes in and says, and we, you know, we don't even need to label or identify where the thought comes from. Is it from yeah. ourselves? Is it from our ego? But a thought comes in and says, oh, you shouldn't bother doing that. You're not good enough, whatever. And most people listen to it. And it's so, it's like if we can learn to talk to ourselves more than we listen to ourselves. So I have my clients talk to their emotions. Like if they're triggered by traffic, I have them talk to their emotion. Like, okay, what is this? Why is this showing up? What is this trying to teach me? If ego is showing up, okay, what am I supposed to learn? If I'm, it's like just constantly talking to yourself. And when you have those thoughts that are like, hey, you're no good at this or whatever, it's like just those I really just like ignore. Like I don't even really pay attention to them anymore. Um, but it's constantly just on the daily being like, wow, like I'm so amazing. I'm so capable. I'm a great entrepreneur. Like, you know, my podcast is amazing and whatever, just all these things. And I think that when people can learn to do that, their ego takes a backseat, their self-talk their negative self-talk takes a backseat. And then that's when they can really see these really cool, positive changes in their life. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really, really good. And it, and, and I think one of the things that you could do to talk to yourself is writing, right? Because mm -hmm. when you write stuff down, you're, you're writing from your mind. Um, yeah. And that, that really opens you up into putting down on paper what's on your mind and, and be more clear because a lot of the times I think what happens is when we don't write, we just keep everything in our heads. We are getting overflowed. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there was, there's a movie and, and they're like, you know, you can't learn anything with a full cup because if yeah. your cup is full, you can't put anything in it. It's, it's going to overflow. It's going to, you know, go out, go out the ear or go over your head. You know, that's literally, where the term comes from going over your head because you have no room, you have no openness to accept what else, what you can actually learn. Yeah. Yeah. Journaling is so powerful. Like I think that more people need to do that. Just write. And there's so many, you know, everyone, I find a lot of people, they get really hung up on like, well, what do I journal and what do I yeah. do? And it's like, well, just honestly, like you said, just write, like sometimes just, write out what's going on in your head or just um, my favorite journal prompt. I can't remember who I got this from. I think it was from, um, oh, what is her name? She's champagne something. Anyways, she drinks like all of her protein shakes and champagne glasses. She's super mm -hmm. cool. Um, but uh, <laughs> her, her favorite journal prompt is what do you need me to know? And basically, uh. you know, Again, whatever you believe in, you can just be writing that. Maybe it's your higher self, maybe it's source, universe, whatever it is, but just what do you need me to know? And then you just write. And I recently heard something the other day that I want to, like, I'm going to start implementing is yeah. you write with your non dominant hand because. Oh, interesting. Yeah, your like subconscious mind will come out more easily on a non dominant hand. So that's something that people could try too if they're really trying to get answers for things. Um, Cause it's just, you know, I really believe that we have all the answers within ourselves. You really don't need to look to anyone else to figure out anything. Like everything is within you. And Absolutely. like, I, yeah, like my job as a coach is really just to help navigate inside your own mind and help you get your own answers. But yeah. um, you just got to tap in and listen. So journaling is a great way to do that. Nice. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, that's something. So I used to, uh, blog a lot back in the back in the days mm -hmm. but now i've got a reminder set to blog every morning 7 30 but i'm not even out of bed or, or i am you know getting kids ready at that time so i either need to get up much earlier or set up set a reminder to blog at a time when i'm already at a computer or when i'm already sitting down and um trying to figure out what i need to work on and a lot of when, you know, when you have questions like, you know, what do I talk about? What do I, um, you know, blog about or what do I journal about? Well, there's, uh, there's a few things I think that's, that are really helpful. Uh, there's sites like Quora and, and you, you have to look into what you're really passionate about and you 
once you look into that specific thing, you can write a ton of about it, but only for so many days without any external help. But then we go to sites like Quora and um, YouTube and you search terminology of what people are talking about in that specific area, you'll see how people have so many questions and how you can answer that question mm. in your own way. Oh, that's a really great idea for content creation. Yeah, I yeah. love that. It yeah. makes so much sense. Yeah, guys, go to YouTube comments, look at all the questions and start creating content around that. That's so, that's so good. I'm going to go do that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you. So, uh, yeah, um, you know, this is really, really awesome talking with you. You know, I learned a lot. And, you know, whenever I'm talking to a guest like yourself and, and other guests, you know, it's validating to myself that what I'm doing is probably on the right path, but I can make some changes to get even better. And you know, it's, it's this human conversation, it's this human connection that helps us enable to do and get better at what we're already good at or what, or if there's something new that we want to explore, how we can do that too. Yeah, yeah, and that's so beautiful. And thank you so much for having me. And I definitely think that these, these conversations, this human connection is everything. And, you know, it's understanding that everything is in like, I truly believe like everything is in divine timing. And there's, you know, there's a reason for everything. And there's probably someone on here who's going to have like a, me a realization or something will have been said that will get them started on something. And that's, that's literally why you're here and why you're doing this. And that's just so great. Exactly. Well, I do have a few questions that I asked my guest towards the end of the podcast episode or the interview. Okay, perfect. Cool. All right. What is one hobby that you wish you got into? Yeah, um, that's such a good question. So I feel like I'm someone who's done a lot. Like I, you know, I've done a lot of different hobbies. Like I used to draw, I used to shoot like rifles. Um, yeah. I used to be <laughs> cadets. I've canoed, hiked. I've done all these different things. Um, I've played guitar. I think that one of the things that I've been wanting to get into, you know, when I did yoga, weightlifting, all those things, um, has been dance. And so I just started taking mm -hmm. like dance lessons, um, which is really fun. And then I do, I do want to be like, I do like shooting. Like, I, I don't know what you would call that. What's the proper term, but I would like to go and keep like doing that. Like I used mm -hmm. to have like a marks, a marksmanship, like level one, I'd like to keep doing that. Nice. Yeah. I just want to, I want to go out on like, the range. Yes, exactly. It's so fun. So I want to keep doing that and I want to keep dancing and I want to keep um, getting stronger in my lifts and I want to get like deeper into my yoga practice as yeah. well and just keep developing that. Nice. Nice. I love it. All right. Next uh, question. What is your favorite movie or TV show? Um, so I'm the first one that comes up. So I love like, I love the walking dead. I love the walking dead. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I'm like a zombie, zombie apocalypse, all that stuff. I love, um, I love Ozark. So I actually don't watch in my calendar. I have one night a week that I allow myself to watch one hour of Netflix and it nice. never happens. Like it happens yeah. maybe like once, twice a month because mm -hmm. usually I might do something else. Like I'd rather connect with people, but I don't really watch TV. I do. I read, um, I'm reading every day and I listen to audiobooks. Yeah. But when I do watch TV, it's stuff like Ozark, you know, so it's maybe, I guess a little bit, I don't know. Yeah. Those are the things, Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, stuff like that. If I do mm -hmm. watch TV. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So if you were to choose a movie, what movie would it be? if you got to play a character in this movie or a TV show? Hmm. Oh yeah. That's a good question. Um, hmm. I feel like I would be the black widow in Avengers. Nice. Yeah. I feel like that would definitely be something. Uh, cause otherwise I'm thinking of all these masculine characters of movies that I love or shows that I love. Yeah. Um, and it's like, so like, if you guys want to, you know, the people listening, if you guys want to look at my Instagram, 
you'd be like, what? Like she loves the Punisher. Like it doesn't make any sense. (laughs) It's like one of my favorite shows on Netflix and like one of my favorite superheroes, but yeah. yeah. (laughs) Yeah, The Punisher is really cool. Mm -hmm. He's great. Cool. So would he be your super favorite superhero as well? Or do you yeah. have a different one? I would say the Punisher or like Wolverine. It's one of those two. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Last question. If you were a board game, what would it be? So like <laughs> Monopoly came up right away. I don't yeah. even know why. It's so popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's just also, I've been reading, like, I just finished Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and you know how he has his game Cash Flow? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And That's so because of it, just, yeah, I've been thinking about Monopoly a lot lately. I think I'd be Monopoly. You know, I'd just be that generic. Or I don't, I hate that. No, we'd have to come up with my own board game because I. Yeah. Did yeah. you know there's 3,000 new board games created every month? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. They're they're just like books. You know, there's more books created every every month, but... Uh, board games, you know, they have their own because there's there's board games of all types and sorts, and you could play. I'm, I'm sure there's a Walking Dead version of of uh, a board game as well. Oh, that'd be so cool! Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> I think that I would definitely choose something that, based on who I am, I would choose the one that no one else buys, like the least mainstream game. That's what I would go for. That's what yeah. I would be. Yeah, awesome, cool. Now, and where can my audience find you? Yeah. So, um, you know, thank you so much for listening and, uh, you guys can find me on Instagram. That's where I mostly hang out. It's I, you know, I know you'll probably post these links. Yes. But I am Kelsey Ann. I'm also on Twitter. I recently just started a YouTube channel and, nice, um, congrats. thank you. And I'm on Facebook and Facebook. I post a lot of questions every day and it's very entertaining for anyone who's who follows me on Facebook because the questions will get like hundreds of answers yeah. There'll be like fights and some of the questions and just like all these things. I can't even keep track of it. So it's it's entertaining if you're looking for that. And very um I ask a lot of questions that really push people out of their norm and get them thinking. So that's a really great place to find me as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kelsey Ann. This was really awesome talking with you. Have an awesome day. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Bye. Thank you for listening to Hacks and Hobbies. You can find additional information on the guest today on their website, hacksandhobbies.com. Please feel free to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on upcoming interviews with amazing guests. <laughs>